preparation for a discussion of a rate increase before the board. I'm sitting here so I can discuss this with our viewing public and also with the board. We're looking at um, the work we've got proposed for this year and the following uh, several years and why we're looking for a rate increase at this time. This is the beginning of our fiscal year, starts March 1st. Um, it does get a little confusing because our fiscal year ends in February of 2021. So it's our, this year is called our fiscal year 21 instead of 20. Uh, just uh, keep a few little reminders through the presentation that when we say 21, we're speaking of this coming year, this fiscal year for which we are working on our budget. And for a little background information, we serve three towns, uh, just under 50,000 customers. We have 17,000 meter connections. And we average uh, over 3 million gallons of water a day. That makes us uh, a medium-sized system for the state of Rhode Island. And our big issue for this year, uh, I'm sure uh, a number of people have been following our water leak we had on our transmission main is the fact that we now have a water supply back in service. Um, it was quite an interesting year because um, it had our entire water supply at risk and now we're looking to see what we can do to supplement the existing supply. This is a slide from my presentation I gave at this time last year. And again, we were talking about the risks to our water supply. All of our water comes from Providence Water through a water main that is in a tunnel 170 feet below the Providence River. And there are risks to if something happens on the Providence side of the water supply system and of course our pipeline. Uh, we didn't think the pipeline would be an issue this soon. It's only 20 years old, but it sprung a leak approximately one-third of the way under the river, so it was not repairable. So this ended up being a pretty serious situation for us. We really had to think uh, through how to get this repair done in a timely manner. We definitely didn't want to run out of water. We found we couldn't shut the main down because it the water supply would not provide enough water through the summertime. It would provide an average day, but not a summer's day. And we didn't want to take that risk of uh, losing pressure in the system and losing fire flow in the system. So we put a, we kept the pipeline in service until we shut it down in the fall when our demands dropped and put a new pipeline inside of the old pipeline. This was a $4 million unplanned expense. We did end up getting some money reimbursed by the insurance, which they paid for the actual water that we lost and some of the fees by the lease of the property that we needed to uh, do the repairs. So what is our remedy? The remedy we've been talking about for quite a few years now is to connect to Pawtucket water as a fully separate supply. The supply we have now uh, only connects to one source, Providence, our first part of getting to Pawtucket is to run a pipeline to East Providence. That East Providence line will give us another connection to the Providence water supply. But again, we're still at risk should that uh, Providence have a problem on their side. Uh, we're going to be out of water again. So the only um, possible means of having a redundant supply at this time is to go to Pawtucket. Pawtucket's got a supply that's fairly high quality, comparable to Situate Reservoir. They've got a new treatment plant, and they've totally renovated their distribution system and their water mains as well. So part one, we're actually starting this year. This is uh, fiscal year 21. We're looking to bid this within a few weeks and get it ready for construction in April <coughs> this year. It's um, one and a half miles of 24 inch main. Uh, we should be able to get about six million gallons of water from this supply, whereas we were limited to less than four with our uh, previous connection. 
and which will give us supply year-round should we need it. And this is just an indication of we're connecting to the Providence system on the red line. They have the blue line to the north is their pipeline that comes across the river, and the blue line to the south is our pipeline. So connecting these two lines together will give us a fully redundant supply with the city of Providence. But part two is running a pipeline from the East Providence tank up to the Pawtucket water supply system. Um, that's going to be five miles of 30 inch, very expensive going through city streets. We are working with the city of East Providence to uh, be able to share the cost as they also need a backup supply as, as they're in the same situation we are, except their pipelines are even older than ours. And um, so this is also being added into our budget. But when we have these both these pipelines in service, we'll be able to use either one and both together. We'll have to use some water from each supply to keep the water in the pipelines fresh. But what we'll be able to do in that case, you can take the minimum from each and then you can go with the cheaper um, supplier for the balance of the water. So for supply projects in our capital budget, we have a 10-year capital plan. Uh, we are have included phase one and phase two of the Pawtucket pipeline for supply and also we're looking at some uh, issues around the Nayette Road pump station which is a low level air area because of climate change. We're looking to build a wall and raise a transformer that uh, sits fairly low. We've already, when we renovated that station, we put up a lot of our equipment inside the station at higher elevation uh, previously. So in our overall infrastructure plan for the rest of the system other than supply, uh, we've got a program to replace clean and line water mains, uh, replace asbestos concrete pipes. They tend to get brittle as they get older and are subject to more stresses. Uh, eliminate some of the low pressure zones. We're um, starting work on that this year, as a matter of fact, with uh, building of a pump station. Um, minimizing shutdowns, making the system more reliable, putting more valves in the system, tying in dead ends for flow purposes. So if we have to shut down a section, there will be feeds from other sections of the system. Uh, we're paying a lot of attention to water quality. We're looking at more state up water quality information coming in from various points in the system. We're adding pressure and flow monitors throughout the system so we can find things before they become an issue. Again, mentioned climate change. We're also very aware of how that's going to affect our system, uh, mostly in, uh, at our, our major pump station. And we're also looking at removing the dams. There's a lot of uh, issues around the Kikamiwa Reservoir with storm surge and water flowing back up over our dams and looking at removing the dams to create a better uh, situation for, for um, future with um, storm surges and um, we're going to have a presentation actually on that a little later in the meeting. So in the capital budget for distribution for our uh, future capital for this year's and capital plans going forward, we're extending the high pressure zone, which means we're building a pump station this year, and then installing enough four miles of water need to make interconnections between uh, various sections of the system to be able to move to expansion on that zone. Um, next year, just for one coming up, is we'll be working on uh, Medicom Ave again, pending what the happens with the work in Bristol by the state this year. We certainly don't want to get involved in a traffic situation. Uh, we're looking at water main renovations continuing. We're right now 14 miles over the next 10 years. Um, eventually replacing the Barrington water storage tank. And we've been working on the meter replacement program and starting the data collection program this year as well. This is just gives you a picture of where the money's going. Uh, the green is the Pawtucket Pipeline, source water projects. The purple-blue is the distribution system projects. 
And I do have some orange on here, and that's the demolition of our treatment plant. We're looking at starting work on that uh, next year. And uh, it's going to be a major project to remove that structure. And looking at debt service, which is a big part of our budget. Uh, to get all these projects done, we'll be incurring more bonding. Uh, right now, we the blue is the bonds that have already been issued. We took out an $18 million bond this just this last fall. That bond is paying for the um, Phase one of the Pawtucket Pipeline, the $6 million we're starting this year. It also paid for $3.4 million of the repair to the East Bay Pipeline. And it pays for the distribution work that we're doing this year, about uh, $2 million. The future bonds uh, in the orange are actually for uh, half the cost of phase two of the Pawtucket Pipeline, assuming at this point that East Providence will join us. It's about a million dollars a year in debt service added on to our existing debt and also continuing our distribution projects. <clears throat> so this year's capital budget for fiscal year 21, uh, so as I mentioned, includes the debt service for the repair of the base by pipeline, Pawtucket pipeline, pump station, distribution, and some other uh, cash projects for facility work that we need to do. Um, for our water main projects for this year, we're focusing on a cleaning and lining project. Last year we did water main replacements. Uh, we're doing some in Barrington, Bristol on the State Road on Hope Street. This is in the southern end of Hope Street. Uh, definitely away from the construction work that's being done uh, further north. And we're Pretty much going to clean and line a lot of the central part of Warren. It's the old section. It's had some issues with uh, buildup of uh, tuberculation inside the cast iron mains, and we're looking to uh, do that work and hopefully get most of it completed in this project. Also, uh, we're replacing galvanized service. Those, some of them had lead connectors. We're not sure which ones that had the lead connection, so we're going systematically through the system and replacing all of the galvanized. We've got uh, approximately 150 of those to do in the system. In our operations and maintenance budget for this year, uh, we've kept that fairly level the last few years. This year, we do have an increase of about 4.7% mainly because we're getting hit with a number of uh, more expensive projects this year. Providence Water just proposed a rate increase of 20.7%, so we have some funds to <coughs> cover a partial rate increase. What we do is we fight that rate increase at the PUC. Our legal counsel uh, hires a financial counsel as well. Uh, it gets a little expensive, but it's well worth it. We've done very well with reducing the Providence uh, rate requests in the past, so it uh, definitely pays for itself. Uh, we're doing some uh, soil remediation for lead at Hope Street site. Uh, we've been working on the dam removals for engineering for the Kikamuit, and we just applied for a matching grant for some of the engineering work, and we're going to be applying for another one the end of this month. So we are looking that we will be getting uh, some funding to continue this work as well. Uh, we have a lot of retirees this year, uh, so there's some program for getting some of the people, more critical people in a little bit earlier for training, and then we also we allotted some funds for uh, possible paving expenses proposed by the town of Bristol. So our 21 proposed total budget overall is broken down by percentage. 22% um, is for employee expense, which is considered relatively low and heavily labor uh, utility. Uh, we do most of our work, obviously, in the field. It is all labor costs. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, our capital construction is 35% of our budget. That's um, 
the majority of our budget, so we do spend a lot of money on projects and we can keep our focus on getting those projects through and done. Providence Water, our supply is under 20%. Uh, hopefully it doesn't go much more than that. Uh, and then everything else that we pay for is in the O&M expense. And that includes a number of products, uh, administrative costs, chemicals, so on, um, that every uh, utility needs to operate. But meanwhile, I just want to mention that we have been very conscientious of our expenses. Uh, we've instituted a number of efficiencies. I just point this first one overall because this is since the 90s. We used to be 38 people. We did have a treatment plant, but we had a very understaffed distribution system. So when the treatment plant was shut down, we transferred everyone to uh, the distribution system. And we also increased our management staff by three. We added an engineering project manager, because we do a lot of our engineering in-house now, which also saves us costs. We have an MIS manager, as we have fully computerized the organization. And um, we also have a GIS uh, technician, which uh, handles all of our GIS mapping and asset management. Or so over the years, last few years, we've added a lot of equipment and computerization. We have our operators our, have their own uh, pads, iPads out in the system. They can look up all the information they need. We have all of our uh, data available for uh, customers. I'm sorry, for our operators. We are going to have more data available for customers, as um, I mentioned down a little further here on our Spark meter system which we've been installing. We're about 90% done with that now. Um, just to mention that, uh, once we have our data collectors up, which we're working on this year, customers will have access to their meter data on an ongoing basis. It will be updated approximately every 15 minutes. Other things, uh, one thing I want to mention we are doing is we're moving, we bought a, purchased a backhoe and a dump truck, so we now hire a maintenance crew to take care of that work for us. Uh, now that we're going to be freeing up uh, one or two people from the smart, from our reading meter system, we'll be able to help them uh, with the uh, moving into our distribution system group as a water utility operator and uh, help uh, now do a lot of our work in-house for backdoor <coughs> operation. And uh, the issue that we have is we've had somebody that's very responsible. We only get one bidder when we advertise for our backhoe services and our maintenance services for when we have emergencies and when we need any, do any of our field work to access our water mains. Um, we lose that person, we, we're going to uh, be in a very difficult situation. So we're moving to doing it in-house, which will actually help us uh, do things uh, as we need to have them done without having to call someone in. So we'll have a much higher level of efficiency and cost savings. But overall, uh, just to mention, we are still seeing reductions in usage through, we still, uh, conservation as low fault flow toilets, low flow washing machines, dishwashers, and so on go through uh, renovation projects that uh, we had uh, a little higher last year. It was warmer and drier. We know this year is going to be considerably lower because of our leak, but our general tendency is still downward as far as uh, customer consumption. So this was just what we accomplished last year. We did a lot of water main replacements for about $2.4 million in Barrington and Bristol. We uh, did our meter replacement program. Uh, we were, as I mentioned earlier, about 90% complete with that. We're uh, just uh, doing the ones that are a little harder to access now for probably the next year. 
This will provide the biggest asset for customers will be leak detection. It will give us a notice if they see water running constantly. And the biggest problem uh, customers have is a toilet leak, which can add up to a significant amount of water loss and get quite costly. So this will enable us to notify a customer fairly quickly that they may have a leak. Also, the customer will be able, and by the end of this year, to look up all of their information online uh, for what they've been using on a timely basis. <coughs> so, our 21 rate increase for this year um, is needed to for quite a few projects. Our biggest one, as I showed earlier, is the water supply. We are looking to set up our uh, rates to be able to provide uh, debt service for the Pawtucket Pipeline project, the, um, for the Phase 1 and the Phase 2, the infrastructure projects that we're also doing for the water distribution system. We still need to maintain reserves for bonding and reduce future rate increases, and as I mentioned, reductions in consumption. The board has met on uh, the budget. The finance committee has met several times on looking at our budget for fiscal year 21 and moving forward uh, for the next few years and also looking at the impacts of our uh, projects over the next 10 years and where our rate increases would be needed to cover all of the projects we get planned. And we came close to this year. This year, this is, uh, there isn't a mansion a day without water day. Uh, it's generally in October. We do uh, put out a notice on occasion to, uh, just to think about what if you didn't have water for one day? What would you do? And you have to think about where all your water comes from and what you use it for. Even if you couldn't go to Starbucks and get a cup of coffee or Dunkin' Donuts because there's no water. And that's just for one day. Um, where do you go if you don't have water for a month? Where do you go if you don't have water for six months? This uh, became very real for us this year. We really found out uh, that things can happen that you don't plan for. We had a 20-year-old pipeline that should have lasted 100 without any problems. And this really makes our system at risk and points out the issues that we could run into. We do have some backup with East Providence. Uh, if this happened in the summertime, where we absolutely had no other water supply, we would have had to go on very severe restrictions. <coughs> we try to plan for the worst conditions but this is why we've been looking to have a full redundant supply from the city of Pawtucket. That's all I have. Um, and I just wanted to mention that it's the board's responsibility to make sure we have rates to cover uh, the work that we need to do. And actually, I want to mention this is in state law as well. 